back to the nerdy news you need to know throughout the week on iHeartRadio and podcast services around the world, because my name's Hoodie. And I'm choking. Hold on. Oh, oh no. Do you, Can I give you a virtual Heimlich? Is that what you need? A push? Nah, I'm good. Water went down wrong. So okay. I'm, I'm Kevin, by the way. And you're officially listening to this scrolly episode of what, Kev? Crisis. On Infinite Podcast. Ooh, I wonder if they sell scroll ears at Disney. I Ooh, know. I bet. Oh, probably at Disneyland. So Maybe, uh, pr- yeah. definitely not Disney World for sure, because Disneyland gets all the cool like tie-in stuff with shows. Disney World, well, we got Mandalorian finally. Uh, but before the podcast, Kevin and I were discussing about uh, Mickey slash mini ears, a debate on how mini ears look cool on anybody. But Mickey ears, the ones that are were originally intended for guys, wherever you wear whatever you want, no worries. Uh, look dopey just on anybody just because they look the cap just cuts off your head it doesn't fit your head if you got a big head and it, there's nothing as fun as like the mini ears that can be decor- decorated yeah, there's so many variations of mini ears my wife has like maybe I don't know 10 different pairs of ears and soon this apartment will have one Miss Morris Skelly <laughs> <laughs> she fell into our trap <laughs> <laughs> but we got a jam packed show for you today not only, obviously, we're talking about Secret Invasion, episode four, called Beloved, Beloved, however you want to say it, but we're talking about Xbox, getting an update with that FTC trial, slash giving you news you need to know with that, because it's been a confusing thing, we held off on it. A lot of trailers dropped, we'll tell you why we think they dropped, and we got some update on Deadpool 3, we got some updates and casting for the entire DCU, and so much more, but you can keep it locked on everything we're talking about by going to hot995.com slash crisis crew or you can go to at infinite underscore pods on the instagram or the twitter or their baby threads it's still at infinite underscore pods where you can also see one at motec i'm on threads now yeah i probably forget about it by the end of the show but i'm on it it's there notifications are on it only took a week and kevin's there <laughs> will kevin interact with it we'll find out well, it depends. It depends on my, my attention span. He'll get a repost. He'll repost everything. He'll thre- he, he'll rethread it. <laughs> yeah, I'll rethread and I'll thread. I'll, I'll thread sometimes. I'll find. He'll it. thread so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Kevin, if you wanted to watch the podcast while we do it live, or if you wanted to comment and interact with it on your own time, where can they also go? You can watch us on demand anytime you want at youtube.com slash if underscore pods, or you can watch us on Twitch live right now, like Andy Drogon, JB Perry. You can watch us on twitch.tv slash infinite underscore pods. And special shout out to one JB Perry1492, because his birthday is on Friday. So this will be your birthday shout out, because after on Monday's episode, you'll be a changed person. A changed man, hey. <laughs> an older man. Hey. Yeah, older man. It'll be it'll be an older game. Why is it? Why is it? And that's okay. I think J.B. Perry in the chat. I think he said he's getting Spider Man this weekend for Miles Morales. Exactly. So you get to enjoy that this weekend. Hopefully, that's all you get to do this weekend. You know, it's funny. I actually thought about another podcast concept recently. Um, as we you know get older into mm-hmm. our not older age but more into our middle age, we just got a podcast. It's called Old Nerds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Old Nerds, Nerdy Daddies. Called. You know, I'm a dog dad, but say that as you will. <laughs> Nerdy husbands, nerdy hub, nerdy hubbies. There you go. There you go, nerdy hubbies. <laughs> <laughs> We're a hub of entertainment. <laughs> um, other cool thing is, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, yes, yeah, JB Perry is gonna be leveling up. I oh, this is what it was. I listened back. I'm not gonna say why, but I just was inspired to listen back to our Dungeons and Dragons episode we did years ago, pre-pandemic. With Wendy's, oh, the yeah, Feast of Legends that. episode. Not gonna lie, we did a pretty good job. So uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Might be a little tease with something. Might be something Kevin don't know about. Maybe Kevin will learn about after this podcast. Maybe an idea I have. That's all I'm gonna say. Or you could have told him a month ago, and Kevin just forgot again. That is true. Or I told Kevin yesterday, but who knows? I tell a lot of people separate things. I'm like, did I tell them that? I don't remember. <laughs> that was right before Thanksgiving, right? It was the Thanksgiving. And it was about two weeks before Kevin got let go from the company. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. It was. It was, a, it was a time capsule of time. We went to Ooh. Kevin's studio to record the podcast. <laughs> I'll never forget that phone call, Mr. Capuzzi. Mm. Mr. Capuzzi. Actually, no, sorry. This was two, like three months before because Man- Mandalorian was when it happened. We recorded a Mandalorian episode, and then 
letting it happen. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We're tired. anyway back to happy. We're, we're good. We're at now. But <laughs> anyway, we start the podcast properly with what you doing. Where we talk about the things we've been watching, things we've been playing, lives we've been living. Because it is Thursday. Yep, boy, it gets to go first. Happy to say, Teddy's viral on TikTok right now and did the Paw Patrol Ooh. filter with him. It's in that pretty good videos and uh, it's funny TikTok comments, baby, of just like. Some people are really nice, and some people, why are you commenting? You don't got to comment that. Like, it's a dog. <laughs> and you learn this from wreck it, Ralph, too. Don't go in the comments, man. Yeah, but sometimes don't you want to. There. Sometimes you just want to make sure, you know, like, hey, I appreciate you commenting on my thing. So <laughs> I learned that the hard way when he first started this podcast. I was going back and forth with somebody about, I don't know. Well, then why am I doing this? I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on top of that, uh, Teddy and I have been watching My Adventures with Superman which is the new animated Superman show on Max. It's technically Adult Swim Cartoon Network, but Jack Quaid is the voice of Superman. Actually pretty good so far. And the star- they did a two-episode premiere. The third episode comes out this week as this podcast recording, and it has a lot of promise. Like, it could be, like, oh, like, Young Justice deep, but, like, surface okay. level of, like, Teen Titans go facade of look. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people post about it. I meant to go, like, go and search it out and see where it was. I just mm. never, never did. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I mean, from what I've seen people talk about it, it was pretty good. Uh, do you mind if I spoil two things about the second episode for you? Nah, I'll forget. Uh, so two things is one, oh, death. Hold on, hold on, hold on ooh, spoiler. Ooh, there, there you go, there, there, you go. Uh, there you go. Death is coming. No, <laughs> spoiler. Uh, the two things is Deathstroke is in the episode, but it's not, it's like proto Deathstroke, but you can tell because he's got like the orange and black like fight suit. He has the two like bow staff katan things. And then they introduce Livewire as a villain too, which is cool. So, so basically, it's like uh, it's like Slate Wilson, not Deathstroke. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it's really cool. They introduce Amanda Waller too, which everyone like. You don't have to say her name is Amanda Waller. You know the look, cartoon wise, of what Amanda Waller always looks like. She's she's in a business suit. It's usually probably purple, most likely. She looks very strong and could beat you real quick. <laughs> she's gonna beat you bad. Beat you real <laughs> bad. Uh, Andy Drogon said she's watching it. Lois and Jimmy are so unhinged. Yeah, it's really cool. Like it's a young version of Superman, so you can really if goes well you can grow into it but it'll be interesting to see what happens with that and the dcu stuff because remember james gunn said he's trying to have everything be the same voices for everything which sounds great on paper but in yeah. practice we'll see <laughs> i'm I actually I, i'm worried about the amount he tweets out actually i think he's gonna get in trouble i like it we'll talk about that in a little bit yeah. because at least he's communicating about it you know true yeah true i i, I get that but i just feel like it's not gonna get him in trouble like 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 his last tweets did, but it still might mm-hmm. get him like just some 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 uh, negative feedback. So yeah. To speak. And then on top of that, I wanted to talk about this. I saw the trailer this week. There's a new Netflix reality show coming out next month. It's called Zombieverse. I saw that. Great. So in case you haven't seen the trailer, it's essentially a reality show set in South Korea where contestants have to survive a zombie apocalypse. Now you're wondering how the hell do they do that? Well, obviously the zombies are actors, but the the like cast, the actual contestants have full reign on like kicking and punching and pushing all the actor zombies away. And you know it's gonna be a good time when it comes out in about I think it's like August eighth it comes out. Yeah, I can see everybody trying to trying to you know, now after this comes out. I wanna be on season two. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like I wanna be on the American version. I'm like, yeah, we're not gonna care about it as much when it comes to the American version. Like, look, we have that squid game. Like actual competition shows, like yeah, Mr. Beast did it like two years ago. We're good now. <laughs> actually, it was a show I used to love too back in the, not back in the day. It was like maybe four or five years ago, maybe six years ago. It was called The Great Escape, and it was by the Great Rocks Escape. producer production company. It was basically like how to escape like Alcatraz, Alcatraz yeah, or like these other places. And it was like they, they would make these make up these. It was it was kind of like an escape room just at, at actual places, mm. and it was really really cool. <laughs> Oh, it was Honestly. on TNT. That's why you never saw it. That's yeah. why. Okay. It was on TNT at like 10 o'clock on a Sunday. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a really cool show. Yeah, but I'm excited for that. In case you haven't seen it, we retweeted the trailer at infinite underscore pods. Rethreaded it, too. Um, Got to say that every time, which is okay. Uh, but that's my uh, what I've been doing. Kevin, what you been doing good, sir? I've uh, been working out a little bit more. I'm oh, on a yeah. five-mile walk yesterday. All right. That was pretty fun. Pretty enlightening. Now we podcasting some, it up. We listen to music. What are we doing during the walk? I do music. Um, 
for most of the part, the last time I was listening to my movie soundtracks. All right. Now, it's, themes it's a, or actual songs? Themes. So, like, I'm walking, and I was like, so it was funny. I was walking down the street, and the Flash theme came on, the CW. And I was like, <laughs> Your pace started picking don't up run, a little don't bit. Run, don't run, don't run, don't run. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen to that. Uh, what another one came on? Oh, the uh, Dora Milaje thing theme from um, from uh, Wakanda Forever will get you in a strut. All right, I like <laughs> so, it. So yeah, all right. So uh, I, I recommend movie themes to, to work out to you if if you, if you don't. If you do, you're a smart person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, still playing Spider Man. I'm about seventy percent done through the main campaign and maybe like sixty five percent done with the whole game. Mm-hmm. All, all the accomplishments. Mm-hmm. So I'm going through that, which is a lot of fun. I just did my last Mary Jane mission, so I'm done with those. Which is forever. Great. You're done with it forever now, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I didn't mind them as, as much as everybody else did and hate, just like hated them. Mm-hmm. But maybe I'm just I'm just I'm just that kind of I didn't mind I think it's just the internet latched onto it. It was like, well, this game is so great, but we have to give it some flack, you know? Yeah, because I I'm same way with like I, I love the Batmobile parts in um Arkham Knight. I don't care what anybody says they were, they were fun. Yeah, they got a little tedious of like, here's two here's two hundred tanks staring at you now try to dodge all of them i'm like god (laughs) like this is on easy they're on hard mode for me (laughs) actually that that last tank battle was harder than the last fight in that game Mm -hmm. honestly you're right (laughs) i had to go like 300 with it i had to actually i I backed myself to a little garage like you can't come through the gates of thermopolis (laughs) i've been playing that still watching spider-man um i did have a um Epiphany about Secret War. We'll get to that. Secret Invasion, I mean. Okay. We'll get to that later. But I was proven wrong. But mm-hmm. I had to go back. Maybe go back and watch it real quick, though. Oh, okay. um, and then, what else have I been doing? Uh, oh, Leah wants to go to the arcades. So we might do that later today. Dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> get them coins. Get them tickets, you know? <laughs> I just hope that she likes to play the game. Because I remember one time I took my nephew to the arcade when he was younger. And he just, he just wanted to play like like the uh, stupid claw game. I'm like, Dude, we can just play Fruit Ninja. It's like right here. No, I want to win right there. Like, just enjoy it. <laughs> we can go buy that at the dollar store for six dollars. You don't need to pay ten dollars to try to win it. Don't be crazy. That's all I've been doing. All right. Well, we got a lot of news. Oh, to, oh yes, that, Kevin. Dude, you got. You got it. I forgot. I've been watching this new show on uh, on Apple. Um, the Seth Rogen show. Platonic. Yes, Platonic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Okay. It's not as good as shrinking. Yeah, no one's really funny. been talking about it. It's done. Is it done now? Because I know the after party just started on Apple TV too. The last one I think is was released today. I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's it, like I said. It's it's not as heartwarming and good as shrinking, but it's still pretty funny, especially if you're um, uh, like me and you, an older millennial, and you mm-hmm. kind of hit that. Okay, I'm still living life, but what do I do now? You know, <laughs> I, have, I have responsibilities. I'm still the same person I was when I was in my teens. So it's it's pretty good. I, I'll give, I'll give it a chance. It's definitely worth like a weekend, you know, binge. Not like like an intense binge, but like I'll put this on for a few episodes before I before I go out about my day All type right. of show. Well, yeah. let's get on into it. It's time for the news. It's time. The news. So, first things first. First things first, I'm the realist. We have to talk about the Ahsoka full trailer, I guess you can say. It's the final trailer before we get the show, which we have a lot of news to cover. So, unfortunately, we can't go deep dives into the reaction theater. We save that when we have, like, one trailer, which yeah. we'll get to a whole debate on why there were so many trailers that came out this week. But, came out, looks real good. Looks like, hey, you like Star Wars Rebels? You like OG Star Wars? You like Dave Filoni? Then get ready, baby. You like Rebels? We got Rebels for your Rebels on top mm-hmm, of your Rebels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but in the trailer, we find out, you know, we see uh, Ahsoka played again. Rosario Dawson was cool. They kind of hyped up the trailer with doing like a journey of how Rosario Dawson became the character, which was cool. Like the, the I think uh, Good Morning America released it. And it was really cool. How we talked about how she was kind of fan casted. She got the role and now she's getting her own show. Um, but we really, this trailer showed off Sabine really in action, doing a ton of stuff. And who knows? I feel like everything we saw in this trailer regarding Sabine is going to be like one episode of just like, this is the catch up from Rebels to now. And then here's the Ahsoka series as a whole. Yeah, I actually, um, I was happy to kind of focus on Sabine because her look, um, and begin her long hair kind of threw me off a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of showing that she's kind of going through something. So okay, that's kind of cool. I can see that. That's why she kind of looks a little, not not as doesn't look the same. as She doesn't does the series. Not as kept, I guess, is what you could say. That's a good word. So, yes. I don't want to say wild, but she looks like she's kind of a, a rebel. Yeah. So, uh, the cool thing <laughs> is, 
Uh, in the trailer, we see Sabine cut her hair, which Kevin kind of just mentioned, which is a callback to Rebels of Kanan cutting his hair before he like accepts his fate as I am a Jedi Knight. Kind of the same thing. You get the vibes that they're trying to make Sabine flirt with being a Jedi, even though if you've watched Rebels, great thing is Dave Filoni did both. So like he's not going to go against what Rebels set up in Ahsoka because it seems cool. Yeah, I, I like that, but I also, and I know it's not going to be the case, um, there's been a lot of people now, like when they watch TV shows, that they get fo- so focused on the storyline that's not involved with the main character. Mm-hmm. That's if they want, and they forget about the main character of the show. Yeah. I, I, I hope people don't focus on that Sabine thing if it's not fulfilled mm-hmm. what they wanted. Like, why don't you try to focus more on Sabine? Like, well, so on Ahsoka. What do you want? I mean, we also get Hera. Uh, I mean, technically Chopper. You could say Chopper cool. is his own yeah, character. Um, you know, we did get Zeb in the end of Mandalorian season three, not in the trailer. I don't know if they're going to go that route, but, but who knows? It seems like maybe Ahsoka might be the gateway into truly having Rebel season five. Everyone's calling Ahsoka Rebel season five because it got the characters, got the storyline following up on the epilogue of Star Wars Rebels. But it seems like this is, hey, this is what's going on in this corner of the galaxy. You've seen Ahsoka kind of chill. In the Mandalorian, but now here's all the rebels because like Hera's kid, Jason Sindula, yes, he's gonna pop up. Fun, a Lego leaked for the ghost uh, ship. Lego it, strikes again. <laughs> Lego strikes again. Her son is in it. He doesn't have green hair like he does in Rebels. He's got brown hair. Let's face it, totally okay. <laughs> Cartoon to live action doesn't have to be one for one all the time. So it'll be interesting to see like. Is Jason Sindula the future of Star Wars? Because we know we have a Ray. Uh, standalone movie of a new trilogy coming on in like five years from now, probably. Jason yeah. Sundulo would probably line up really well with that to be age wise. That's, that's also my one worry though about uh, this. Like, like you said, everybody's going to want a Rebel season five after this. But do you want to animate it now, or do I, are we are we spoiled because we got live action? Well, I think you that I, mean? I think this has to prove it's good to go into live action, and then the season yeah. two is like here's all the rewards for. It. I mean, look. Rebels had to prove itself in season one, and then in season two, when it reveals, you know, Ahsoka is Fulcrum, then you're like, I'm all in, let's go, baby. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I remember, I'll never forget her walking down that ladder, like, oh my god! Mm-hmm. And then it got so <laughs> much so better, cool. it got so much better from there, that's not where it stopped. <laughs> it, it, that, that, that was like 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 the, the the beginning of the roller coaster, when it goes up, and after that, it was like, yeah! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was an abrupt stop at the end. Um, yeah. But we also don't want to miss out first actual appearance, color or front facing of Thrawn. Um, we kind of saw the back of his head in the first trailer. Got leaked to uh, Star Wars Celebration. What it looked like. Fine to see. He's got the red eyes. A lot of people critiquing that. Hey, the character's got red eyes. That's the best we can do in 2023 time. So just deal with it. <laughs> That's part of that race in Star Wars because the yeah, guy the that was race. in, um, mm-hmm. uh, shoot, that's played the whole game for like for two months. I can't remember the name of the game. Uh, Jedi Survivor. He was the same race as, as no. the guy at the bar. No, what he was wasn't. Okay, I thought it was the same guy. Um, but yeah, but the race has red eyes, so I mean, get over it. Yeah. Like, like, um, what do you want? <laughs> cool thing. Other things we see, uh, it looks like Sabine has Ezra's lightsaber. We do hear Ezra's voice. Sounds great. Still have the theory, is Ezra dead? Are we ever going to get to Ezra by the end of this? Who knows? Yeah, we saw him on like a little communicator thing, and I was trying to. I haven't looked around to it. I was trying to see who was playing him, what he looked like. I couldn't really see in the trailer. I mm-hmm. wonder if that was on purpose. Well, I, I, still, I like, think they're trying. I think that's a thing. Back to what you just said of like, this is Rebels, but Ahsoka is supposed to be the main character. So it's like, well, maybe that is your tease. Maybe he pops up the final episode, and then like we said, this seems like a show that deserves a. I know Ahsoka season two or whatever it leads into. Eventually, we know everything culminating in that Mando movie somewhere down the line. Who knows? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be opposed to like an Ezra series after this, kind of mm-hmm. like a follow up, a la Bo- Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, I mean, one the cool, of the things that I like, but I hope everybody else likes too. And the cool thing is just like how wild like Rebels really copied the Star Wars formula, but made it cooler. Of like, here's your band of Rebels that you love. There's a Han Solo type. Uh, who's a pilot? You got Hera. You have uh, your love interest, sort of Sabine, which is, Le- you know, you had Leia there too. Chewbacca was Zeb. R2 was Chopper. Um, and, and Ezra was Luke. And it's really, and Kanan was Obi Wan, technically. Slash yeah, they, yeah, yeah. And um, they also had, like, like, like kind of like that, um, 
that creature. I can't remember what it was called, but he was like, kind of like the Yoda because he was like the Bendu. It's just the Bendu. The Bendu. Yeah. Um, also, we got a love uh, a f- first actual proper sighting of Purgles, the space whales, uh, which we got a glimpse of in Mandalorian season three. Yeah, everybody got mad about that too. I'm like, can can y'all like anything about Star Wars anymore? Yeah. Like, I mean, can you just enjoy it? I think the thing like it's like, hey, this thing. It's a space whale. It's not gonna look like a real whale. Like, just let it happen. Let it ride, baby. Let it rip. I Maybe mean, they're all space whales. Who, who are we to know? <laughs> who are we to know? Damn you! Who are we to know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got a trailer for Wonka. Looks cool. Looks like a fun time. Uh, Hugh Laurie is a Oompa Loompa. That's probably the main thing from that trailer. And. At, that is a movie where if you go high into that movie taking drugs, you are going to have a oh boy of a time. Um, Sure. Uh, I, I like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory personally, even though his grandfather's a good-for-nothing waste of space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I've really been a fan of Wonka since that one. That's, that's my Wonka movie, I guess. The uh, Johnny Depp one was weird. So you're you like Willy Wonka in the Wonka's, Chocolate Factory, yeah, Wonka, yeah. and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory is the Johnny Depp one. Johnny Depp one, yeah, that one was weird, not, not for me. Um, yeah, it's and this one looks a little bit like it's just you're doing too much now. Yeah, this one looks like it's trying to blend both of those worlds, and you know it's got Timothy Chalamet in it trying to do his best, Timothy Chalamet. It'll be interesting. I think it's definitely going to be a, a fam- try to be a family film. I mean, that's what it should be. It shouldn't be traumatizing like both the other movies were in their own ways. But it probably will be. Let's face it. You know what we need? We need a Timothy Chalamet, Tom Holland face-off movie. Ooh, where they're just going at each other the entire, entire time. That's, but then it's like, did it really even change bodies? It looked the same in some regards. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it, it wouldn't be, it, they're also the same age. They're both 27. So it wouldn't even be that hard to do it. <laughs> uh, and then just to stay in the realm of trailer talk, we got to talk about Blue Beetle release its final trailer. That also comes out next month. Looks fun. Really got more of the world of Blue Beetle. I, I think we re- this isn't a movie that needs to build hype. It's like, yeah, you're either going to see it or not. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to see this movie then. I was sold on the first trailer, but this trailer showed a lot more about, about like the the family mm-hmm, involvement in mm-hmm, this, mm-hmm. and I think that's just going to be um, a, a ripe a ripe ripe ammo for laughter. We saw a Grandma with a big old gun. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, that's going to be. And George hilarious. Lopez is in it, so exactly. And th- this seems like the kind of character and the kind of family that James Gunn would just love to to use in any any of his stuff. Maybe not another Blue Beetle movie for like the next five or six years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, definitely he'll or show up, and his family will be in it. Showing up in Superman Legacy, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, um, thinking of also Timber in his DC realm. I'm seeing this news on Twitter that they've cast Metamorpho, what um, and it's the, uh, Anthony Kerrigan from Barry. It's gonna be Meta- Metamorpho in Superman Legacy. Metamorpho, Metamorpho. If you watch, if you watch Justice League, he's like got 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 the guy that can like change his body to different elements. Uh huh. You are all right. So this is a breaking crisis. So this yeah. one, we're gonna switch up what the show is gonna be. Correct, good sir. Barry Star Anthony Kerrigan, according to the Hollywood Reporter, has been cast as Metamorpho. Well, that's that's interesting as well. Um, that movie is getting deep. You want, you want, to, you want to get into that more? We're gonna get now? into that right now. So the yeah. interesting thing is Metamorpho. Obviously, we know you know James Gunn loves his more obscure characters. Let's face it, we would have gotten you know Ronan the Accuser. Ego and then High Evolutionary. If it weren't for James Gunn, Metamorpho sounds like an interesting first villain for Superman. So <laughs> he's, he's also not really a villain, so to speak. Mm-hmm. He's more like a um um. I, now, I, oh, I don't hero? know. Anti hero. Play it again. Anti hero. Yeah, because in the in the cartoon, I don't know about his comic culture, but in the cartoon, he was basically used by his fiance's father for an experiment because he didn't want him to marry her. Okay, and that kind of caused his rage, and that's why he's fighting Justice League. Then after a while, it kind of oh, we're actually on the same side. We're fighting this guy, not you. And then he kind of came to the side of Justice League. Mm. Um, I, that's what happened in the cartoon. I'm not sure what happens in the comic book with him. I'm not, yeah. I'm not too versed with him in the comic. So you're right. He is more of a hero. I just because he's because he's the bat. He, he's the villain or antagonist in Barry, right? Yes. Yeah, he is. Okay. Um, so it looks like he'll be playing that. So it looks like it might be more of a here's another character that's coming. And this is on top of James Gunn yesterday, slash Vanity Fair, really, letting the cat out of the bag with four major castings. 
Yeah. Um, so we also got a news that uh, Nathan Fillion is going to play uh, Green Lantern, Guy Gardner. Guy Green Gardner, Lantern. Green Lantern, who you've never seen live action before. Now, I can't pronounce this guy's name. I'm, I'm turns over. To I you. got you. Uh, Edie Gathigi. Uh, <laughs> that's that right. Who you might know as Laron from the Twilight movies. Don't worry. I just watched him. So he's the he's the he's the, the sexy vampire that when they play baseball, he's got the other two side vampires and they sort of glide on in. That's him. He also was uh, Darwin in X-Men First Class. You know, the mutant that was supposed to adapt to the elements and never die, but then he died first. <laughs> don't, get me, don't get me started on Darwin, man. <laughs> uh, but he is going to be playing a version of Mr. Terrific. Now, I get we've seen Mr. Terrific before in Arrow, uh, played by Curtis. Uh, but uh, but in this version, it is actually Mr. Terrific who is... Uh, try to get it. Where is it? Do, do, do. Michael Holt. Do you think, though, because we, we kind of both met Echo Kellum at uh, E3. He was, he was a little... I don't want to say he was a little full of himself. But he was trying to, try to use his clout to get in some parties. You think he was kind of upset about that? <laughs> um, I mean, well, it's a different version. So at least they're going with sure. that. I think they're doing that for a lot of the characters just to be different, really, because... Every besides Hawk Girl, there's only there've been a ton of adaptations of every character. Um, but yeah, you've seen him in Arrow. He kind of is an inventor, smart. He invites the invite invents the T spheres, so he's kind of like a gadget man. Green Lantern, Guy Gardner, Nathan Fillion, James Gunn was right. He's he was bringing a Guardians of the Galaxy actor over to DC. Um, kind of more of a immature, even though he's he's probably going to be. Deemed older than the green, other Green Lanterns. In in recent like um, uh, animated uh, DC stuff, he's been kind of like a Boston bro, mm-hmm. which is pretty funny actually. Uh, I love that's that. No great. Ho Hank is trending, and instead of his name, they're just going No Ho Hank. <laughs> no Ho Hank, baby. <laughs> there you go. Um, but then on top of that, we also got confirmation that we will have Hawk Girl in Superman Legacy, and it will be played by Isabella Mercad. It's just another cool, uh, mm-hmm. another cool casting. We have we've seen Hawkman, so I'm gonna see Hawk Girl um, on on the screen. I'm mm-hmm. um, kind of mm-hmm. wish that in some way um, that actor could be with, on screen with her as Hawkman and Hawk Hawkman and Hawk Woman, but you know whatever. Um, interesting uh, thing is um, that's not gonna be canon because that was uh, <laughs> that was Black Adam. Adam. So <laughs> even though it was it wasn't terrible, but you know it didn't didn't make nothing. Uh, but Hawk Girl, you've known kind of mostly. You've probably most notably seen her. In Justice League Unlimited, uh, was she Hawk Woman then or Hawk Girl still? It was still Hawk Girl, and oh my gosh, oh, if if you've never watched Justice League, watch the first season because when if when you find out what she's been doing, it's one of the best things yes. they've done in comics. Uh, but ever. so <laughs> four big castings of DC heroes, most likely to be paid off in future projects. You would assume Superman Legacy takes place. In a pre-established world of heroes, instead of starting with square one like we always do. Yeah, um, James Gunn has came out and tweeted and said they're not doing an origin story with this Superman, mm-hmm. which I don't mind because, uh, like, save for like I don't know what's a hero that we but we all know, Mister Mister um oh, shoot what's his name? They're doing a show with him on Disney Plus. Uh, uh, the, uh Hawkman Hawkman's playing him actually. Um, Aldous Hodge, Mister. Uh, what is it? What is it? Oh my gosh. Disney Plus Marvel show. I know. <laughs> uh, keep going, though, with your point. I'll, I'll figure it um, out. But like, there, there are certain heroes that don't really need a origin story. Superman's one of them. You mm-hmm. get it. He's an orphan from space, and mom and pa can't pick him up and ra- raise him with wholesome values, and that's why he's our Superman. Mm-hmm. You don't really need to see the... the even though I loved it in, in, in Man of Steel, because they paid a lot more attention to it, we, didn't, we know Krypton blew up, his dad sent him away, and he came to became Superman. You know that Bruce Wayne's parents got shot in the alley, and that's what made him Batman. You know Peter Parker uh, was um, trying to go wrestle somewhere, and that's how Uncle Ben died. You don't need these <laughs> these yeah. stories anymore. And you know? I, th- I think obviously, like you said, these ki- the gr- even the Green Lantern, they're all smaller characters. Unless you watched Arrow, you kind of know a little bit more about Mister Terrific. Um, but you're right. I think planting the seed is a better option than, like you said, trolling through five movies, four of which you don't care about to get to a Justice League movie. Whereas this way. Hey, they're gonna pay off, you know, Superman. It makes sense that if Superman's even if he's learning about his powers, there'd be other superheroes doing other things going on, you know, and he's catching up. Exactly, and I'm more interested because we've we've seen a lot of Superman. Um, oh, we've seen a lot of Superman mm-hmm. so far in this um 
the last 10 years. I've seen a lot of Clark Kent, though. Yeah. So I'm interested to see more of Clark Kent than Superman. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I think the cool thing is, like, hopefully James Gunn, just because we've seen what he's done with Guardians and with the Suicide Squad, there'll be more of a dynamic between him and Lois. Uh, because kind of in, I mean, we really only had Man of Steel, then Batman for Superman and Justice League. Superman and Lois were kind of, they just they had their one scene, and the rest of the movie they didn't really interact with each other. So it'll be interesting to see how integral that is, especially now that we've had Superman and Lois on the CW, and we have My Adventures with Superman, which are heavily influencing that relationship. Uh, by the way, I got my information wrong. It wasn't um, Aldous Hodge. It was Yaya Abdul Bateen as as um, Wonder Man. Wonder Man, yes. Which is like, you're <laughs> like, <laughs> what is Wonder Man? Well, you'll find out. Maybe exactly. Turn on the <laughs> uh, But yeah, so it's 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 kind of a cool but confusing time. Just of like, hey, what's going on? And that's why we want to talk about James Gunn's tweeting. Is he has been confirming like I don't do movies and to introduce characters just to introduce characters. I have a plan, um, which is great. And I think that's the beauty of him interacting, kind of. Kind of the opposite of what Marvel does is Marvel doesn't really interact. Kevin Feige doesn't have a presence online that much besides being a meme until there's a Marvel convention where they reveal everything, which I think for right now, for Marvel fans, kind of inflates our predictions and then they deflate rapidly when they don't happen, whereas this way, we're with them the entire ride. Yeah, there's that side of it, but I'm also worried about the side of when he tweets out, hey, we're doing such and such movie, and then... We're waiting for it, and it never comes out. And he has to come out and announce, "Hey, sorry, because of stuff, we're not doing that movie anymore." Mm-hmm. And then the, the, there's that rancid pile of the internet that wants to come pile on on top of that. Yeah. And he, James Gunn, the way he is, he, he he'll, he'll talk to anybody. I don't want him to get sucked in to, to a Trolls. conversation, mm. trolled by somebody with five followers. And all of a sudden, now he's he's the bad guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting journey. I mean, the movie doesn't come out for two more years, uh, so with casting is great. Um, but I think the elephant in the room is why we've had all these trailers, why we had all this casting news, is the r- actor strike most likely is going to happen tonight as this podcast recording or tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to it. And because of that, actors can't do any press, can't do any publicity, can't go on any cons, can't do any acting, really. So it's like pre-approved things. There's loopholes and everything. So DC... All the places that just released trailers, they're doing so because they know this is going to happen. Can't do anything at Comic-Con. Can't do any interviews for any of this stuff. Yeah, we are basically right now eight, eight and a half hours away from a writer. From we a are, we're show. eight minutes away from the doomsday clock. Exactly. <laughs> and um, this is maybe the worst thing that could happen. Not, not only to Hollywood, but even like the state of California when you realize how many like, you know, restaurants and cafes and coffee shops depend on people making movies to, you know, patron patron their business. Mm. This is really bad. I mean, I kind of think they will come to an 11th hour agreement with the actors, but they still got to do something with the writers, man. The way they're just leaving them out there Mm -hmm. to just basically... When you're poor, you'll come back to us. That, that's not a cool way to do business, man. <laughs> like, um, th- there was a report that came out on Deadline that said they're basically waiting until, until October. And that's when they figured that they'll, they'll need money again, need to start working again. And that's when I'll talk to them. Like, that's not, that's not a, just a cool way. To, that, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth, and we'll have another strike in 10 years. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so just get ready for whatever is coming out. That's what's coming out. Who knows what after. But... Why all that news literally like yesterday as this podcast recording all came out within like three hours of each other. Like, oh, I can't. Too much retweeting. I can't do it anymore. Oh, oh stop it. <laughs> stop it. Uh, but that leads. We're cutting stories here because we're already running back on time. Uh, we're going to cut the Xbox FTC story. It happened. Xbox won the trial. So in the U.S. they can legally buy Activision Blizzard. That's sort of the short suite of it. Uh, we'll see when the games come to actual Game Pass. Great. If you're Team Xbox, your Team PlayStation over there, well, you're going to have to deal with that. Um, no, it's, not, it's not even that. I just I just missed the days of there were a million studios making different, different yeah, games. Yeah, I mean, it's still Activision's game. making their games. Just Xbox yeah. has the publishing rights to it, which, which is fine. Whatever. Yeah, um, cool. Short and sweet of it is Call of Duty games will most likely be on Game Pass day one. Probably starting next year. Not this year. Still too late for that. Um, other thing is uh, they have to get approved in uh, the UK. Once that's approved, they're good to go. But the US is kind of the precedent for that. So that's what's going to happen there. We're also going to get a Black Panther video game by EA. 
Really cool. It's going to be by some of the developers uh, behind the Lord of the Rings, uh, the Shadow of Mordor games, which if you played Assassin's Creed 10 years ago, any of the Batman games or that game, they all kind of similar of like rhythm beat em ups of hit the button, beat up everybody, which is dope. Seems perfect for a Black Panther game. Um, more to come on that just got announced, but I'm excited and can't wait to rock the MCU suits in that because that'll be the suits we all rock in. <laughs> I'm also wondering, too, if it's going to interfere with the other Black Panther game that's coming out with Captain America in it. Yes. Made by Sundance, which I think Amy uh, Amy Henning is supposed to be doing that game. Yeah. We'll find out. The same thing. Like, we're in a writer's strike, which is mainly movies and TV shows. Video games kind of got their own thing going on. But that seems like Marvel might be relying on the video games just in case things oh. kind of hit the fan. I 100% think these companies aren't idiots. They were like, oh, well, go go ahead and strike your little, uh, you know. <laughs> your yeah, actors. we'll make a billion dollars off. These games, though. Yeah, we got a billion dollars off Spider-Man coming our way, <laughs> says Sony. <laughs> you see how much GTA made? They haven't made a story thing in 10 years, exactly. and they're still making money mm-hmm, off their game. <laughs> mm-hmm. But on top of all this, we have to talk about it. Deadpool 3. We literally called this. On Monday's episode, we're like, hey, we're probably going to get a review of what Wolverine looks like because they've already shown us what, or they've told us Elektra is coming to the game, uh, the game, the movie. And little did we know, 12 hours later, we got our first look of Hugh Jackman in the iconic yellow and blue X Men suit from the 90s. And he looks so good. It's, it's, so good. What's it? I would say it's in all his glory, but he's not naked. But it's still pretty glorious (laughs) to see him in that blue and yellow suit. Uh, So Ryan Reynolds and Max Maffert, his production company, posted the images first. Uh, It's kind of ketchup and mustard, essentially, almost, uh, of Deadpool. Getting your actual look on that with the actual full costume. It's a little bit brighter. It's like we talked about on Monday. Wolverine without a mask. Will we get a mask? Who knows? Do we need a mask? Mm, Not so much. Uh, walking on scene, doing fights. Today, they revealed Hugh Jackman wearing the claw, like, gloves, the claw handles, or whatever you want to say, before yeah. they CGI'd a little bit. But the interesting thing is, one of the photos, if you expand it, you see they're fighting in an open field with a 20th Century Fox logo behind them. And I'm not talking, like, a, a water print so that everyone knows, oh, it's that. No, it's, like, the 20th Century Fox, like, statue or whatever you used to see in all their movies <laughs> yeah the, 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 we all knew this movie was gonna be pretty meta mm-hmm. um and that that was kind of confirmation of it there's been a lot of rumors that say like we said on um sunday's episode that it's going to be deadpool kills the fox universe basically mm-hmm. um and that, that's gonna be fun but honestly i, I don't really uh, care what else this story said i just saw my yellow suit from my from my childhood i got really excited yeah i it. literally like <laughs> it's oh, get it don't trip Oh, oh, watch the collection. Watch the collection. It's this Wolverine costume. Like, yes. it's that. Like, and that, like, this is, you know how iconic this is? I went to Louisville and saw this in a, in a, in a toy antique store. I was like, I have to have this because why? It's spring action loaded Wolverine cause. Come on. <laughs> yes, because I mean, if you're not keen on this, um, because I had to had, actually had that toy to play, I played with and I didn't know it was going to be collectible when I was. In my thirties, but whatever. But it's like a little thing in the wrist, and you flick it over, and the claws just shoot out. It's so cool. <laughs> and the then you wrist? put it back in and spring load it. It's yeah. amazing. I had, I had like four or five different Wolverine toys, and they all had the same action. And I can't wait. Like that's a Funko Pop I want to buy. So when that, like that, you know, I said I'm kind of done on Funko Pops unless it's like the good one, a Hugh Jackman Wolverine <laughs> Pop in the in a Wolverine costume. Hell yeah. That's going to be. Uh, that's definitely probably going to be an expensive pop too. Oh, I mean, it's going to be like a collectible pop. It's much like how I have the Tobey Maguire and Green Goblin pops. Like, those went instantly out of everything from No Way Home. A Deadpool pop with Wolverine, probably two-pack or something, is going to go hotcakes. I'm also looking forward to this because you saw on Hoodie's figure that he doesn't have any sleeves. On this picture, he has sleeves. And I'm pretty sure that at some point he'll rip them things off and let them guns show. Oh, That's you know he's, so cool. he's going to let them guns show, <laughs> and I cannot wait to see those guns in action. Also, I, I can't really tell. It's probably just my imagination. I, I keep thinking he has a cigar in this picture, but I don't think he does. No, I mean, he probably will at some point. Let's face it. Yeah. Um, but regardless, I, that's kind of the same story as James Gunn is doing. Is Ryan Reynolds is like, hey, this is what we're doing for the movie. And like we kind of said... Do you want to know everything that's going on in the movie, or do you want to have a little bit suspension of disbelief of you figure out what's going to go? I like the way of like, hey, 
we know Wolverine's going to be in it. He's going to be in the costume, so don't speculate it. Just go in with expectations, and we'll blow them. So I'm kind of like in the middle of that. Like I don't mind getting information about like um, you know, like for example, Quantum Forever. We weren't sure there would be a Black Panther in the movie, and we kind of saw that last shot of mm. somebody in a costume with claws with with claws coming out. Uh, so I'm kind of in the middle of that and like those old school uh, uh, Entertainment Tonight stories on a movie coming out where it's kind of mm. show back backstage footage. Well, yeah, to, like today, you know I mean? like Good Burger Two, Keenan and Kel yeah. revealed like footage of Good Burger Two, and it's like the first time we saw stuff for Good Burger Two. One because of the right and the actor strike, most yeah. likely. Uh, but it's like. That's cool. Like you, you knew they're gonna go to Good Burger. You know, <laughs> like it's called Good Burger too. You know, he's gonna have Wolverine, and he's probably gonna be either in the black and yellow costume or in a a thick ass jacket. <laughs> so yeah, I'm more in the middle. Of, like I'm cool with that, but I'm not to the edge of like I know you not aren't either hoodie. Like people that actually just want to know mm-hmm. what happens, plot plot blow by blow. Like kind of like Eric, he wants to know the entire plot before he goes to see yes. a movie. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, now before we get into Secret Invasion, Kevin, I have one question for you. Yes, sir. What do you think is going to be slash is more iconic? Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming back as Spider-Man and Spider-Man No Way Home or Hugh Jackman in the yellow and blue suit in Deadpool 3? Uh, I'm going Hugh Jackman, actually, because he's, okay. he's been Wolverine longer than they've both been Spider-Man. Ooh, by like a year. <laughs> Tobey yeah. Maguire, correct. Touche, touche, touche. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I feel like the same thing. I think... Hugh Jackman just being in that costume, like the, the dude's been Wolverine on and off, whatever you want to say with movies, for practically 25 ish years by the time that movie yeah. comes out. Um, but I think crowd, that highlight moment of No Way Home is Toby popping up, the portals being real, proven wrong. This is just seeing Hugh Jackman say bub and the talking Wolverine voice again. Talk Wolverine voice. Um, Watching him probably cut Wade's arm off once or twice during this movie is because mm-hmm. he's frustrated with mm-hmm. him. Um, cur- probably curse him out very harshly. Because mm-hmm. the other thing, we get to see like a, a actually like in depth Wolverine in this movie, like kind of like we saw in Logan, mm-hmm. like with cutting off limbs and blood and stuff. Like we didn't really see that Can't until wait. Logan. That's why it's rated R. Curse words, not so much, but blood, you better believe it. Blood from the clouds. Blood from the clouds. <laughs> but. <laughs> No, snick, 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 snick. Oh, yeah, snick, snick, snick. <laughs> <laughs> but, Kevin, we're not done talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it is time to keep scrolling, 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 scrolling. Yeah. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. What? <laughs> so we're talking about Secret Invasion Episode 4, a.k.a. Beloved, 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 whatever you want to say, however you pronounce it. Be uh, low vid. Be low vid. Um, but like we said, jam packed show. Now we're getting a secret invasion. Um, it is every time we really have a secret invasion episode. <laughs> Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, because they get, get, trying to get this news up because they know they ain't going to be working for a while. Um, but Kevin, this was the shortest episode so far this season. We got two more to go. This was technically about like 30 minutes ish with the credits. Uh, what did you think about it? Non spoilery. Yeah, they're getting shorter every week. If you, if you I don't look like that. Each episode, the last <laughs> episode's 10 minutes. It's just a short. 20-something, and this one's 30. So I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, this is going to be 20. The last one's going to be 19. Like, what, what are you doing? It better not dip into 20 minutes here. Like, come on, fam. <laughs> that being said, though, this episode had me on edge my entire... Had me on my edge of my seat the entire episode. Mm. I, I love this episode. Um, I was looking at it in the framework. Like, again, I, I don't look at... The Marvel shows as shows, look at as movies that are segmented out over six weeks. So when I look mm. at this episode, this was the mid-fight climatic ep- part of the movie, basically. Yeah. So this this was the um, the scene where they killed Coulson in Avengers. This was um, the scene, the airport battle in um, Civil War. Mm-hmm. This was like that that mid um, the mid mid action packed episode and. From the beginning of it, uh, when they started off, I, I, I'm also liking the start off like with, with, with little flashbacks. That's pretty cool to me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but from that to uh, his meeting with his wife to another meeting he had yep. mm-hmm. uh, with somebody else, I was just like, "Give me, two. you know, this is going yeah. to happen." I, I, I think the same thing. I really do love that. Pretty much for the most part, I think every episode has had a flashback to Fury's per- earlier life. Which is great because it fleshes out a character who we really knew nothing about besides him popping up in the end of Iron Man and then getting the team together. And this literally, like, 
to go from a scene right after Avengers as a flashback is really dope. Um, I, I do think I hated the episode was short. I was like, oh, give me just a little bit more. Um, but I do like, you know, the, this episode has continued the trend of we are leaving you on a cliffhanger, but we'll immediately answer that cliffhanger like within the first five minutes of the next episode. Um, some people like that. Some people don't. I, I like it because like, all right, cool. I don't have to, the whole episode think, oh, they have to answer that question. Then if they don't, I'm pissed at the TV show. Yeah, I think us as just a consumer of um, content and, you know, shows and movies, we just gotten really lazy with our sto- w- 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 how we receive stories. That was how it was back in the day. Mm-hmm. You didn't find out if JR, who killed JR in the eighties, to like a year. Yeah. Everybody was fine with it. And, you know? <laughs> and I really feel like this episode really was. It felt at least the acting scenes. That there's an action scene at the very end. Um, really felt stage play esque ish yeah. or something. Where it really was Samuel L. Jackson and an actor holding their own. I think really like every every scene was like two people up until like the final scene of everything. You're right. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. It was yeah. COVID, uh, probably. Um, but it really felt like plays and well acted, which I think this show credit. Say what you will about action and what it's moving forward, it's well acted by everyone across the board. Yeah, that's the one thing I kept saying about this episode that it was very very well acted. Mm-hmm. Um, and I 100 percent agree. Um, interactions from all the characters. Um, Talos and his daughter, Gaia, um, Don Cheadle and Samuel Jackson, Samuel Jackson and the lady that plays his wife. Um, even though he didn't have any one-on-one action, even Garavik and Nick Fury in his episode, they didn't really talk talk, but it was it was still a lot of nonverbal, you know? It was still really good interaction. I love this episode. This this is becoming this is top three for me right now. Ooh. And my favorite Marvel show. Depending on how they stick to TV landing. show. Yes, you got to wait for that landing because yeah, Marvel landing is very hang to the not sticking of the landing on its TV shows. <laughs> like, like if this ends with Agatha coming down and saying, it was me all along, this is like, a joke, I'm like, oh, oh screw you. Oh, I guess. <laughs> now I'm going to watch House of Harkness when that comes out eventually at one point. Uh, exactly. But let's get, let's get on into it. Full spoilers abound. Let's face it. If you're listening you or watched, you watched the episode. And if not, you're a sadist like one Andy Drogon. But I think Andy Drogon actually watched the episode this time. <laughs> Andy Drogon. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. No, I'm we don't know. That. JB Perry watched it this time. Um, but full spoilers abound. Uh, I, off the top of the bat. <laughs> she hasn't watched she it. She hasn't watched it. That's okay. <laughs> Andy Drogon. You. Uh, we have to talk about it. Rhodey is a scroll. We called it. We called we it. Called it. I mean, we everyone. Everyone's practically called it. I mean, that was the gimme of like, we yeah. We did it first, hoodie. We called it <laughs> after episode two. We saw it then. <laughs> um, but yeah, essentially, this episode confirmed he is a scroll, a nun named scroll, as far as we know, compared to anyone else. Um, the main question we don't know with it is before we go into like timeline order of everything, how long has Rhodey been a scroll? I'm thinking sometime after. In- after Endgame, mm-hmm. no, no, I won't say Endgame. I'll say Infinity War, because okay. we still saw him in the in the um the um I don't know what we call it, like like the supports that mm-hmm. Tony built for him after he got paralyzed. Mm-hmm. Saw him with, with those in no, we actually saw him in Endgame too because he had him on. We got out to suit when he was at Canopy. So sometime after Endgame, I'm thinking because we haven't seen him in those supports since. Yeah, I don't I, know if that's like a oversight of the scrolls or what. Yeah, the marketing team already, Kevin Feige mainly. As Barney said, well, now it's the perfect time to go watch Rhodey's other appearances on Disney Plus because you, you you'll know when you can probably tell when he's a scroll or not. That's mainly go watch other things, but I feel like it's going to be after Endgame, Infinity War timeline of like, okay, yeah, maybe it, the one time he was in Falcon and Winter Soldier, that's when he was a scroll. <laughs> that that could have been him too then, but it's funny you said that because I actually did that yesterday. Because when we saw when we said that he called, he didn't call Fury Fury in the episode. He called him Nick. Mm-hmm. I went back into Age of Ultron. I'm like, that's right. He 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 bought him to help them in Sokovia. What did he call him in that? But he didn't. He didn't actually didn't address him as anything in that movie. I'm like, dang it! I thought I had the secret mm-hmm. secret answer. I didn't have the answer. <laughs> Got to wait till episode six on that one. <laughs> but episode four, like we said, beloved, starts what we said uh, with a flashback. Actually, sorry, it doesn't go to a flashback. It starts with Gaia uh, sitting on the floor, immediately like we all called it. Not dead. She's surely alive because she got injected with the Super Scroll 
formula extremis. or extremis, whatever. Um, mainly using the extremis part of all that, which has been the main highlight out of all those uh, super scroll abilities um, to survive Gravik's uh, bullet he shot her with. Um, she got that extremis in her, is what I said. Um, but while she, well, like we said, immediate pickup of last week's episode, she survives, she runs off. Gravik thinks she's dead. We then cut to a flashback to Paris 2012. You're like, wait a second. That's right after the Avengers. And you're like, correct. This is about a week after the Avengers this scene happens because we get bald-headed Nick Fury uh, in all his glory, prime Fury, some would say, going to a date uh, with his wife Priscilla uh, where she shows him the newspaper headlines, Les Avengers. This is cool to me to thought that after... Stopping an alien threat and stopping a nuke from um, detonating in Manhattan. He's with France, hanging with his wife. You know, so he's, he's done. He, he doesn't need the glory. <laughs> um, but we good scenes. Like we said, this episode well acted. Uh, we find out Priscilla's been reading a uh, Raymond Carver poem called Late Fragment. To call myself beloved. To, uh, it's, it's kind of mainly the highlights to feel myself beloved on Earth. Really good acting. It's kind of built that chemistry between the two, even though we haven't really had that. We've only had it for like an episode and a half. But you felt it in this flashback, and then it gets picked up later in the episode. Yeah, I saw somebody complain about that, that oh. th- that wasn't earned. But I was also like, how many times have we seen like one little fla- How We've only seen Steve and Peggy on screen for like a total of, I don't know what, an hour mm-hmm. of the entire mm-hmm. uh, Marvel series, but we felt, felt that romance mm-hmm. over 22 movies. I was like, it's really that crap. It was earned. It was great. Yeah, it was I, good. I think also <laughs> with this, it's kind of a suspension of disbelief, but love has all forms. And yeah, with scrolls intended <laughs> all forms. Yeah. Um, so really, it is you know their relationship isn't what a typical relationship is because it's really and, and that's proved they only hang out. She's a scroll one, uh, she has to be in human form all the time. We'll get to that in a little bit. And two, she only really hangs out with her like at the end of things. <laughs> exactly. And then the the I actually love this scene for that for that um, notion because because of this scene here, and then we'll see we get to next when they actually um, are in, in their own house. It proves just how different couples are. <laughs> yes. Uh, but then we cue to Modern Fury's uh, Priscilla Priscilla uh, at St. James Church, where she is meeting confirmed Rhodey, who implied here he's a scroll working with Gravik. Do we get a reference to The Undertaker and a DDT from the top rope, even though Undertaker doesn't do that? But Nobody does, because it's a very dangerous move. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> Rhodey, is, Rhodey Scroll is what I call him now. Uh or scroll roadie, whatever, telling uh, Priscilla she has to kill Fury. All the while, Kevin, you get your points on here. Fury was ahead of the game, two steps ahead, because he tracked his wife to the meeting, and later he'll track, he'll track uh, scroll roadie, because Fury was listening on the meeting, because when she comes home, he gives her some tea, and immediately, like, oh, there's some drugs in that tea, or he's going to kill her. Like There, there was tension in these scenes, but it was subtle tension. Yeah, the tension was great, because, like, the... the as soon as he went, well, he, I'll say as soon as he was listening on to that conversation, that's when I, I got like, ooh, this is going to be good. What's going to happen next? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, we also get a cool line. Priscilla says he'll be dead from exhaustion and defeat soon enough just because we've kind of made the notion. Fury's beaten and, ba- beaten and battered uh, nowadays. But we still have from the trailer where he goes to the grave and gets the eye patch back and shaves his face. So we'll see what happens with that in the next two episodes. The suit-up scene. We're getting the suit-up scene. got to get one in episode up. five. We got one with Sam in the, in, the, in, the, in the Captain America suit. Now it's time for Fury. I love this. Oh, am I going to go back and watch that now? I love that scene. <laughs> uh, interesting thing is we find out Gravik and Pagan is number two guy. They're saying pretty much, you know, we're going to pose as Russians to attack the president to start a world war. Definitely got the no Russians vibe from Call of Duty of like we're posing as Russians to start something, which is really cool. Their video game connection. Um, I, got, say, uh, yes. I, I know a few Russians. I played football with them for years. Not all Russians are bad. They're pretty good people. I just mm, want to say that. I, I, I America, really a bad rap in this show. America, Kevin. Come on. <laughs> uh, but we find out Gaia reunites with Talos. Uh, Gaia really saying Talos. Like, Gravik has a plan. People are behind him. What's your plan? Because we can't really do anything if we can't rally behind you. And it's where Talos kind of once again fumbles the bag of like, well, we'll just play right by the humans. They'll throw us a bone. But that ain't been working. It's been 20 years since you've been playing that game and nothing's happening. So it's pretty much having the underline of like, 
the goal for Talos is to be to, to be beloved by humans. So that way, the the entire scroll species can be beloved on Earth and live on Earth in their own world. It's definitely a um, Professor X ma- uh, Magneto thing going on between mm-hmm. Gravik mm-hmm. and Talos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so then we find out, you know, a guy has. Don't you want to live in your own skin? Talos is content with looking like Ben Mendelsohn and not in his green form, which we finally got to see him in that in this episode. Um, but then we cut to, like Kev said, the Fury residence, uh, where Priscilla knows thinks Fury is gone because his ring is in the dish, but kind of a flip coin of what we had at the end of episode two. He's making tea for her and uh, get this really well acted scene between the two of them that Fury. Kind of implies jokingly he doesn't know what's going on, but when he sits down at the table with Priscilla head on one to one, he knows what's going on. Pretty much saying, I lost all all reason to be your husband, but he said I'll n I wouldn't change the thing still, which is like, oh man, like this relationship. <laughs> they've been through stuff. I mean, I, I mean what have they been through? We'll just count it. They've been through an invasion of New York. They've been through the blip. uh the, been through the, the infinity war of, and a, of a whole city in Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. He basically died in the <laughs> Winter Soldier. They've been through a lot. The blip. <laughs> so uh, you can't replace that. <laughs> but then we also find out while they're talking that uh Vala, who's her scroll name, before she came Priscilla, she actually met the real Priscilla Davis. We kind of found out how like we kind of talked about a couple weeks ago, how did she choose that body? Um she chose her because uh Priscilla Davis was a doctor, well respected. She was gonna die. Um, she kind of played the long game with the doctor to take over her body. She made three promises to bury her at sea, to continue to be the daughter to her parents, and to never hurt Fury. And uh, she says, Sorry, Nick, I have to break that promise. They do kind of a Mr. and Mrs. Smith of like we have to shoot each other. And then you're like, All right, easily Fury got the jump on her because it's really his show. But no, yeah. they both live. They both shot off to the side, basically. And that's when Fury says, I don't know whether I sh- we should divorce you or just get remarried or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, this, this is their relationship. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I was like, this. I was like, I love it right there. That's I love that that relationship. And essentially with that, Fury leaves the house saying, you know, Priscilla, you're on the run now from Gravik. Uh, she has a line where it's like, have you did you ever really love me? Um, if would you have loved me if I was myself really in her scroll form? And Fury says, "I guess we'll ne- I guess we'll never know." And then locks out like a G. <laughs> like, like a G. This, I think this pretty much means whatever happens at the end of this. If like, I don't know, Gravik has Nick Fury under his foot. She's gonna take a shot, and that's mm-hmm. gonna be the thing that saves him. She's yeah. Back. Um, but then we cut to actual Scrody, uh, according to Andy Drogon Skull Rody, which <laughs> sounds but not bad than it is, um, because we find out Scrody is a scroll taking a shower. And before he exits the bathroom, he switches into Rhodey form. And we find out, yeah, Fury broke into his hotel room. And Fury gets to jump on him. We know we, we know Fury knows he's a scroll. He's on our side now. And pretty much from the get-go, Scrody's like, something's wrong here. Fury's trying to poison me because Fury tries to give uh, Scrody Pappy Van Winkle, 23, uh, which is a $5,000 bottle, which really was just a Pappy Van Winkle ad more than anything in this episode. Is that a, is that a real line of liquor, by the way? Yes, it is. Pappy Van oh, Winkle. I didn't know that. Uh, one intern, John, and Mr. Eric V are obsessed with it. Um, but essentially, we find out, like Kev said, Fury two steps ahead, playing with Rhodey, wanting him to take the drink of the alcohol he poured for him because he knew the Scrody would like the alcohol and drink it more. Turns out... $1,300. I'm sorry. I didn't mm-hmm. realize this, it's this was expensive. a thing. Turns out... <laughs> Uh, Fury put a liquid tracking in the bottle so they could track Rhodey wherever he was going. And we find out before sort of the big reveal of like Fury telling Scrody he knows he's a scroll. Scrody says, I got footage of Gravik in Fury form killing Maria Hill, making it look like you killed Fury, uh, killed Maria Hill. Yeah, th- th- that, that, that was a, uh, that was a tricky move he pulled on him there because there's no way. There's basically no way they can uh, he can he can say it wasn't me even though it wasn't him because mm-hmm. the eyes don't lie. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. But then we cut to President Ritson meeting with Rhodey. Uh, turns out President Ritson Dermot Mulroney uh, is in England to negotiate with the UN. Everyone pretty much of what's going on. And it's funny, Ritson has the line of, I can tell you drank bourbon. Like, you need to get a mint, essentially. They get in the convoy, and this is kind of the scene, action scene we've seen in the trailers of Gravik attack, attacking the convoy. And pretty much that's what happens. Uh, eventually we get to the point where uh, Gravik 
got them Groot arms, is what I said, and uses his Groot arms as a super scroll to kill a guy, crush a guy internally, whatever. Um, all the while, the whole point is they're trying to get President Ritson, so that way they can then fra- put him in a fracking pod and take over as President Ritson. Yeah, and this this this, this was a really good scene. Um, they held their own for a little while until Nick and Talos pulled up, mm-hmm. and this is, I was laughing to myself because it was like um. We gotta help him. And he goes in the truck. Oh yeah, like, help him with pistols. They have an automatic <laughs> firing rifle. They, they had some kind of weird shotgun, shotgun grenade launcher. And I was like, yes. oh, well, that that definitely would help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then eventually we get to the point uh, that uh, Fury, Talos, uh, British reinforcements, they get to the president. Turns out Talos is the only one who can kind of shatter through the bullet through bulletproof glass. But while doing so, he gets shot in the arm and transforms back in his scroll form. Bunch of the soldiers say, he's an alien! Fury has to say, no, he's with me, which for most of those dudes, probably the first appearance of a scroll to them ever, which will be interesting for the next episode. Uh, but eventually we get to the point, Talos opens a window, Fury takes the president out, and really, at this point we see in the episode, which will probably follow up next week, Fury choosing the president over his actual friend Talos that he's known 25 years, you know? <laughs> that was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Um, that was heartbreaking to do. And that's going to be something he's going to have to tell to Gaia. Mm-hmm. Whenever he meets up with her again, um, but at the same time, I feel like if if the roles were reversed, Tyler's have to think think about it too because Fury, Fury thought about it hard, mm-hmm. and then he knew he knew that he had to actually just take him because it's it's the president of the United States yes. and you're not just going to leave him out there. Uh, but all the while, Fury escorts the president back into his secure car. He looks like he's going back to Talos. Turns out one of the British soldiers is helping Talos get to the car. But British soldier stops in the middle of the battle. Turns out it's Gravik. He fatally stabs Talos. Uh, Fury shoots him, and he finds out. Oh, Talos got, or sorry, uh, Gravik has that extremis in him. And then that Fury leaves, and that's the end of the episode. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, Gravik is officially a super scroll because he had he displayed two powers: mm-hmm. extremis, and um, we knew he had extremis from the last episode. Mm-hmm. But we didn't know he had he had the, the Groot arms as well. Um, it, it, it's just. Graphic sucks, man. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah. He sucks so much. Uh, we really get it in this scene, like, Fury, like, is actually like, oh, shoot. Like, oh, crap. Like, this is effed up and my friend's dead. And pretty much he has to leave. Uh, all the while, uh, Scrody is just chilling in his car and no one, like, said anything. I'm like, oh, Scrody's just chilling, have a good time, listen to something, mm, bop. You know, no big deal. Exactly. He's just in there. Well. They're fighting. And, <laughs> and obviously, his details are scrolls, too, because he made that call about where they were mm-hmm. in the, in, in, around his security. Details. So obviously, they're scrolls, too. Mm-hmm. Probably. Most likely. Um, but graphic just sucks, man. I, it's funny. I hope he dies, but also I hope he does not. I, I kind of like, would like to have him waiting in the wind for like another, another like ground-level uh, superhero. Yeah, sort of yeah. ground level or villain. if we get a secret invasion, yeah. too, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, that too. Um, that too. But Kevin, my question is: Is Talos really dead, or are we going to find out he's alive in the next episode? Uh, with this show, I guess you could say never say never. It, it could be the fake death show all at once because all, 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 all that could have happened is yeah. that that wasn't Talos actually; that was somebody else. That was or he like just, how Talos looks. As he scroll. has super you know scroll I mean? in him, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, maybe he he went and got some super scrollness in, into him at some point behind Fury's back. Um, but it looks like it might be the end because the the way Nick cried out when he got shot, mm-hmm. it's kind of what maybe that was the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the other thing is this show is kind of like you said, killed off people to come back, st- still hanging on at Maria Hill death. So I I think don't get your hopes up. I'm not going in on the life model decoy thing again anymore. I, that was episode one. Now like they dead, they dead. <laughs> I'm I'm still not out on it that maybe they introduce it as another mm. like you know tool in the toolbox for whatever you want to use it, mm. use it again life model decoy but um oh, just talos was cool man like i'm, I'm really sad he's gone yeah i mean he's i think gone. interesting thing is like say what you will ben mendelson in rogue one versus ben mendelson as talos been a connecting piece for marvel i mean he was in no way or far from home and in this uh with captain marvel i think the death didn't feel as impactful as the maria hill death so i'm thinking that's why he might live or at least live partially through the next episode yeah because i think we've only really seen scrolls that were shot in the head die we haven't really seen yeah really armed arms and stabbies in the arms unless they say oh their heart was in their arm the whole time you know 
My heart's right here, man. What are you doing? How did you know? <laughs> um, yeah, I think cool story, bro. In the in the chat at Infinite Underscore Pod said the best. We need to stop taking bad guys off the board. Stop killing great or a potentially great villains. I mean, look at Loki. We you know we how much that character has developed now really more as an anti-hero than anything. Not to say every villain has to become an anti-hero, but like even Killmonger in Death brought him oh. back from Wakanda Forever for the dopest ass reveal scene. It was like hell. Yes, you know that. That's the one death I'm still like. Why did you, you didn't have to kill him? Mm-hmm. That you could have just put him in a Wakanda in jail. He could have broke out at some point. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? You didn't mm-hmm. have to put him in jail. Yeah. You didn't have to kill him. Um, yeah. So I think only time will tell, really, with what goes on. We will find out next week, most likely. But with two episodes left, it's on the clock. That ending looking real close. So come on, Secret Invasion. Well, I'll, I'll say ne- next episode is going to be the Avengers: Age of Ultron barn. A farmyard episode on Hawkeye's farm, so I, I don't expect anything um, dramatic to happen. I, I expect a lot of a lot of exposition uh-huh. about what's going on and how are we feeling. And then I think maybe at the end of episode five next week we'll, we'll, we'll get his suit up scene. And we're going we're going to war episode six. Yeah, and then we will finally see what's the coal obsidian power. You know what, what's that power looking like on a super scroll? <laughs> He's just going to jump and throw a hammer. Like, that's, no, I mean, that's, actually, you know what? It's probably just super strength. It's probably just stronger than he, than he was as a scroll. Mm-hmm. It could be what it is. That is true. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, let us know what you think about Secret Invasion so far. we got two episodes left. You got that extremis in you? Let us know uh, in the comments at infinite underscore pods on the Instagram or the Twitter or the threads, which Kevin is now on at Motech. You can also interact with us live during the podcast recording all the time and interact with us on your own time at infinite uh, twitch.tv or youtube.com slash infinite underscore pods always also, keep uh, oh yes tell kevin a friend, tell a friend to follow us on twitch yes tell follow us on twitch we're trying to see how far we can make this baby go on twitch.tv slash infinite underscore pods yeah tell a friend you know what I'm saying? hey take, take their phone like hold on i'm downloading the app for you and i'm logging in yeah. oh, there you go yeah, and right. the best part is they don't have to watch us live twitch it's got it for a week right now so we're exactly. trying to work <laughs> on that um but we'll be back on monday talking about what the hell's going on with this writer strike if it or sorry the actor strike if it actually happened or not we'll also be talking about some disney if you're going to disney as a vacation tips for that because i'll hit a milestone there with mora and Kevin will be sharing his top 10 video games of all time list as we finish number 49 through 1 of GQ's best video games of all time. Yeah, I probably should start working on that list, huh? Yeah, you got about like five days, so you better hurry up yeah. on that one. But <laughs> I'll do it the day of. Uh, that's, that's okay. That's, that's the best thinking right there. It's in exactly. the heart. Whatever the heart tells you. <laughs> Under pressure, baby. You just list oh, one, God. and then you have nine through <laughs> nine through one down. Like, um, we'll figure it out. I'll just all the Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> yeah, Assassin's Creed one, two, Brotherhood three, four, <laughs> but not, but definitely not Assassin's Creed. Uh, what was it, Liberation or Unity? That's what it was. <laughs> not that when it came out, but now it's not that bad. Eh, that sounds good. <laughs> um, but have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. But as always, my name is Hoodie. And I'm Kevin. And you've officially listened to this scrollified episode of what, Kev? Crisis on Infinite Podcast. Give me back my roadie. <laughs>